So to my knowledge, this kind of learning has never been tried at a civilian institution. It's very much something that military, that search and rescue, that a lot of professional education uses, and it hasn't been tried in a civilian academic context, and that's um, experiential learning, where you set up scenarios in order that the students can experience, if not the real thing, can experience a version of it that will allow them to learn lessons. So it was set up initially that there would be two teams, blue team and red team. Blue team would be responsible for protecting an area, and red team for penetrating into that area. To make the scenario realistic and approximate some elements of current conditions, blue team was given extremely restrictive rules of engagement, limited, tech, limited intelligence on red team's objective, but significant advantages in terms of planning time, structure, organization, and of course, technology. We worked really closely with the ITS department here at Colgate to give them every advantage we can think of. So they were given two rotary drones, which are um, small quadcopters that you can attach cameras and other kinds of payload to, one fixed wing drone that could stay up for an extended period of time and had multiple cameras on that, a number of iPads and other kinds of cameras that could act as surveillance devices that were put into the field in fixed locations, and a series of networks, um, by which I mean kind of Adobe networks and computer networks, that fed that information back to a coherent headquarters where it was all displayed on screens and then they were able theoretically to communicate. In addition, when they asked for it, we also provided them with a large satellite map of the area that was laminated so they could use grease pen to keep track of things. Red Team was given manpower, and that's about it. It was a fairly extensive uh, planning operation. We've been meeting over the course of the last several weeks for approximately five or six meetings of two hours each, and we've planned very extensively the procedures we're going to undergo for air operations, flying drones over the entirety of the area, and uh, additionally delegating to various field commanders. We're very excited. We're confident that our technological advantage, as well as the truly great uh, amount of spirit and skill that's present on this team, will let us carry the day. We kind of were playing with one of two things would happen, or possibly even one of three. In the first case, blue team's planning would pay off, and they would create an efficient system with a number of contingencies that could keep them flexible and start to rack up their captures early on. That did not happen. The second possibility we thought that was that Red Team would lack cohesion and rush across the border or have fast people come across the border first, etc., easily caught by an efficient blue team and lose that way. That also did not happen. The third, which is closest to what happened, is blue team's cohesion would break down immediately as soon as there was a challenge. And indeed, this is what occurred. So they had some problems with the technology. And as a result, they, I don't want to say panicked, but they lost their cohesion very rapidly, emptied their headquarters, and lost all of their communications and efficiency advantages. And as a result, despite the fact that Red Team did not perform stellar in a stellar manner, Red Team was still able to win because Blue Team lost all of its efficiency advantages and Red Team, while inflexible in its plan, stuck to one plan that did exploit some of those weaknesses. The biggest thing that went wrong first was one of the drones we became unaccounted for. We couldn't figure out where it was. And essentially, command fell apart after that. Um, everybody was trying to, we essentially lack of leadership, I suppose. Um, it was two against two, pretty much. We kind of drew the attention away from one person. And the person wasn't that far over the border, so. Yeah, we just kind of made a run for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People kind of got a little bit discouraged as things went on. Um, the red team's lead started to grow and grow, and it was hard for us to kind of combat that. It hasn't been too much strategy. I mean, we tried a couple things. We looped all the way around, but it didn't really work that well. But Yeah, I mean, mostly we've just been kind of traversing the border here, looking for weak spots. Looking for mismatches. Yeah, and yeah. then when we uh, find an area that we think we can exploit, <laughs> we just sort of run as fast as we can. got a couple other people that are running, a couple other people that are sort of like intelligence, 
Uh, yeah, you sort of just walk up and down. We and got our we phones. Have, we have yeah. a nice group chat going. Yeah. We've got a group chat going. And they, yeah, 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 and they're exactly. like texting it and telling us where everyone is. So we sort of have a general idea of what's going on. The final score was 17 to 4, which means that red team reached its, had members reach its objectives 17 times, and blue team had four captures. The plan is to do it again. It would take the lessons we've learned as a staff and as faculty working on this, and the lessons the students have learned, and apply it to a better and more complex scenario. We have come to the conclusion, and the students certainly have come to the conclusion, that this was a very experiential learning, and using these kind of scenarios is a very important and very useful learning tool. And I know other departments are now speaking about how they can apply it in their curriculum.